<laughs> first generation here in America. Both my parents, my family, born in the Philippines. You know, I was for I was not forced. I'm sorry, I take that back. I was kind of like influenced to be to both, you know, a nurse, right? And I was in nursing school. Uh, I went to CCC Camden County Community College. Me too. All that stuff. And I was getting good grades, you know. I was getting the the A's and B's, but I wasn't happy, you know. Uh, I knew I would have that financial freedom, but that happiness, that passion wasn't going to be there. If I were to become a nurse, I'd walk into that hospital every single day, just miserable. Yeah, I'd have that money. That's tight. Um, But I just wouldn't be happy. So I remember one time I was in my anatomy class and we were dissecting some shit. I think it was like a pig or something. And... How you been? It was good, man. How are you, man? It's nice to see you. Nice to see you too, man. 2020, man. Honestly, that is, it's honestly been a roller coaster of emotions, a lot of highs, a lot of lows. Yeah. But I would say I'm trying to look at it as like a learning experience, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you're trying to as well, I'm trying to make the best out of it. Um, I mean, it's overall, yeah, that's it. A learning experience. I'm trying to pick up new hobbies. Um, obviously, running a brand revolving around passion. I'm trying to revive my old passions other than just um, running a clothing brand, you know? Mm -hmm. I used to be a dancer, really into fitness. Um, I like writing. I like just doing a bunch of different shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So the photography page is coming back. I just saw you put that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw that in my story. I'm trying to revive like my old photography style. I mean, right now running a brand, it's just a lot of model photography, Mm -hmm. right? You know, have a model wear your clothes. But when I first started, um, I remember when I first picked up a camera in Jersey and I surrounded myself around a group of like creatives and they're, I'll never forget them. Like shout out to Steve, Chris, Tommy, Nick, all of them. They introduced me to like a regular Canon 60D mm-hmm. and we just go around Philadelphia, go into abandoned buildings and just shoot pictures and, you know, just take creative visuals. And it's just, I don't know, it felt really good. It felt good. So that's something I'm trying to do, um, honestly, because 2020, it could be, a lot of dark stuff happening right now. So trying to stay in a creative space is definitely something I'm trying to, you know, maintain. Yeah, I agree, man. Like 2020 has a whole bunch of turns and a bunch of shit going on. But I also feel like a lot of times when like things get the darkest, like the most creative stuff comes out of it too, though, you know? Of course. Yeah, it really, it really pushes you too. I mean, like, I felt like this 2020 really, really broke me down. Um, you know, I was working my nine to five job, burning my business. And then I got furloughed from my nine to five job. And that kind of like, that was like a really big step back. I was actually kind of nervous, like, what am I going to do, blah, blah, blah. But then I saw it as another opportunity on my lap to just excel, level up, you know, and a lot of uh, learning experiences from my mentors. It's just, you got to stick in a student mentality and just stay outside your comfort zone. And I'm definitely outside my comfort zone right now by just, you know, working off the unemployment, running my brand and just, you know, thinking of new ways to create multiple sources of income and be creative at the same time. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Like, it definitely seems like fun. How do you, like, when you go about making your, uh, like when, you, when you're designing a shirt or, like, thinking of ideas or something, like, how does that usually come to you? What's, that, what's the concept usually like? Is it more like an idea? Is it like you see something, you eat something? What's that process like? I'm just curious. Yeah, 100%. Um, well, first, LPDT Movement. Um, I run it. And then also, my, I have another business partner who runs it, who actually lives in San Diego as well. He lives That's in crazy. A, full circle. Yeah, yeah, full circle, man. He lives in a Chula Vista. Um, so he comes up with designs and I also come up with designs. We have we look to a lot of other brands for inspiration as mm-hmm. well. A lot of the brands like Barbara Brigade, Le Fit, um, obviously the main brands like Nike, Adidas, and kind of just like see how we can put our own spin to it, our own style. Mm-hmm. Um, we play with a lot of words like obviously passion, this logo right here that you see. Um, just so- we like to keep our how we used to be. We're actually going through a transitional phase phase right now. Um, we usually keep our designs pretty minimalistic, mm-hmm. pretty small aesthetic, super clean. Um, just so it could like cater to the majority of people who wear just simple stuff. Cause not everyone wears like very loud, vibrant colors, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Majority of people just wear just regular simple stuff like this, you know, nothing too crazy, just regular two colors, contrasting, chilling. Um, but Knowing myself, I want to start expressing myself a lot more through this brand because I feel like LPDT hasn't really fully expressed David Mm -hmm. Um, I wear a lot of different shit. 
Um, so I'm starting to transition to a phase where it's more like street, urban, a lot of more colors, different designs, crazy fonts, all that nice. stuff. A little more flair on there. A little more flair. I mean, honestly, you, a lot of people say when you're running a brand, you got to stick to one market. You got to stick to one look. Yeah, that's true and all. But at the end of the day, this is our business. It we is. can do whatever we want. We, we, we make the rules. If you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. And if you do and you support it, much love to you. That's it. So just do, doing whatever we want is what pushes our creativity. I agree, man. Um, there's a lot of shit that I went through, too, just, like, from my personal, like, branding experience that, like, I was like, damn, I'm a trainer. I can only put out trainer stuff, like, fitness this, squat this. Then I was like, uh, maybe it's us, us. I'm, like, funny, too, or I can put out more podcast stuff. So I think, I think no matter what, like, you have to be the most you as you can, you know, whether it be your brand or, like, just you. So putting that out there and the main people are always going to – people that are going to fuck with you are going to fuck with you no matter what. You know exactly, what I mean? yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's definitely like the move too, man. Like, and I saw you guys had like a line of like end racism shirts that you made that that, that was dope. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, that's, uh, so we're starting to build a team now. Um, LPDT has been around since 2017 and it's just been ran by Phil and I, my business mm -hmm. partner, but we're starting to put more people on building a team and we brought on our friend Jessica and she's super passionate. She executes just like that. She's a doer, super nice. enthusiastic every single time we have meetings and all that. And she's all about the community right so lpdt not just being a brand revolved around passion but we love giving back to the community we love having a philanthropic vibe to us because it's just another passion of phil and I's. Mm -hmm. um and with everything going on with all the circumstances especially with you know george floyd and all the black lives matter movement we wanted to support that we wanted to show that hey lpdt stands with you guys we're not trying to lay low right so we had jessica just take full just because who we brought on as our project director for this passion project mm -hmm. um and we just had her take full creative control you know we didn't want to micromanage her and tell her you got to do it this way or that way we were just like jessica we trust you run this project we're here to help and then we could just execute it together so she thought of this this sign or she's she, she drives down the highway a lot and you can see like the caltrans sign especially with covid it says your actions save lives and covid19 mm -hmm. right so we were just, she was just like, she thought the idea of what if it says your action saves lives and racism. Pretty broad statement, short and sweet, bold, and just throw it on a shirt. That's it. Throw the LPDT logo on there. And then whatever, um, all the funds, all the proceeds will go towards the Black Lives Matter movement. And that'll just be like our statement and our move of helping and supporting the community. And honestly, it feels good. It feels good. We still have a couple shirts and we're just getting it rolling. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I saw the shirt. Yeah, it's a dope design there. Like, design was dope. The message is dope. Like, yeah, the the creative it's different, process. It's a different cool. design. It's a different design. It's not like the regular, um, uh, simple aesthetic. It's just it's totally different because it's like a passion project line. Um, it has more of a vintage look. The T is more vintage, stonewashed. Um, it's definitely a different vibe. But I think it's just the fact that. We just love giving back to its community. It's another one of our passion projects. It just feels great. Sounds great, man. Like I feel like uh, I feel like there's just so much like there's so much room for passion right now in 2020. Like you just 100%. you have more time, and you're either going to drink it away or you're going to you know work on some shit you always wanted to. You know, like the 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 time is only going to be what you make it. Um, yeah, you, time's your best friend, man. Yeah. It is. It is. And, like, just the growth of, like, you know, having to adapt with each thing and, like, just the, the process of, like, fuck it. Like, it's a new decade. Like, this is where you want to be by the end of the decade. You know, that, that mentality, that mindset, just like, uh, it's such yeah. a, it's such a, such a big deal, man. Yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah, granted, like, it gives, it's given you so much time to work on your passions, like you said. And uh, it, it's crazy because I also think it's a time for, like, really finding out who you are. Yeah um physically mentally spiritually it's not easy man i mean this is a, we're going through a pandemic and this is kind of like new for all of us you know it's kind of hard because we've never really been put in this situation where we're just like having this cabin fever stuck in the house you know so it's just really bringing out who we really are whether it's room for growth creativity or just putting a reset on your whole life it's just all about how you execute it and I've come to learn like you can't really be so hard on yourself, right? That's kind of what I'm going through right now. It's cause like I'm given all this time, right? And I have all this freedom to do 
anything I can, but I have the kind of mindset where it's like, I'm never satisfied. Nothing's ever enough. You know, it's, I can't, it's been a while since I went back to bed and I'm just like, okay, I, I killed the day, but really you can only do what you can, you know? So it's, not, it's, it's a good time for just evaluating your life. I would say so. I think so too, man. I think um, you really just got to like this, this, I think the analysis paralysis thing just being like, you got so much time that you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. And you're just like, fuck, I don't know what to do right now. Cause like I can work on this, I can work out, I can eat, I could, DM to my Instagram, wear my clothes. Like, there's just so many, yeah. you have so many options that, like, analysis paralysis definitely just like changes everything. Cause you probably had no time before when you work nine to five. Like, oh, I gotta do all this shit for work. And then I gotta do this, my passion. Then it's like, now I got all the time I can do what I want. What the fuck do I do first? I went through that too, man. It was, I was definitely like, like, shit, like, what do I do next? I have, um, one of the best things that I found, like, for me. And then, like, another episode I was talking to, like, Three episodes ago, I was talking to this guy, and he was talking about compartmentalizing your day. Yeah, Dan, he was talking about compartmentalizing your day and like your time. And I think um, just like the, him to help me out, to help like you and help out the guys, people listening, that um, like just kind of breaking it up however you can, and then like so like work out from this time blank to blank, you know, pro- project for this time blank to blank, and it kind of just I don't know testing out different things and seeing what different things work. I was working out more in the morning, and then. Then I was doing midday, then like, I think you gotta just test it. I think the best thing that that the free time definitely would give you is that you can fuck up for the whole, you can fuck up a whole week, but then learn like, oh, I did this, I did this, this didn't work out, I don't like this time. I think it's cool. So like you said, it's a whole year of just like growth and just development, you know? Yeah, hundred percent. And I gotta ask too, from from your perspective, I mean like you, how long have you had this uh, podcast going? What, like, what, I know we both used to live in New Jersey. Like, what brought you out here to San Diego? You know, I'm going to switch the tables out real quick. I, I like it, man. I like I think I also have, like, enough people, actually. I realize I don't know that many people that, if you, if you followed me, knew, you wouldn't know anything about me. So I guess, like, this is, this is good, too, to get that little bit of context. Of course. But uh, my, my cousin lives out here in San Diego, so I used to come and visit him, um, like, a lot of times over the past, like, four years or so. And then the last time, last January, I moved out here, and I lived with him. So that's, okay. like, that's how I got out here. And uh, I'm loving it. Like, SoCal is it's a good life, man. Like, you out there in L.A., like, San Diego, you know. They don't have this in Jersey, bro. They don't have this in Jersey, so. You know it, bro. They don't have – the only thing they're missing out here is Wawa, bro. That's it. That's, that's the only thing. About that every day, I'm like, damn, I need, I need Wawa hoagie right now. Like. <laughs> so, see, it, it, it warms my heart hearing that, man. Just knowing that I'm talking to another fellow New Jerseyan, man, it's – it's crazy but they don't dude, get it man they don't get it so like, is is the way to go it's definitely a different environment people think different here culture shock different pace you know it man you know it yeah man it's different energy but as far as the podcast um i started my podcast in like 2018 okay 2018 november actually or october i gotta check the date but i started in 2018 nice. and um it was just like a fitness podcast first and then like the next stage then I was like I don't want to only talk about fitness so I did um another podcast that was like a motivational kind of thing I did that every Monday and then I did another podcast which is like what this one kind of is right now I was like I'm gonna keep interviewing people and talking to people I'm just not gonna make it just fitness you know so like yeah. anybody who I think is dope or like has something I think offered to, to my podcast will like do it so, like, my main thing now is that I'm just going to have, like, a podcast, like, instead of, like, having, so my podcast thing is, like, it's Dom Jackson, it's the Dom Jackson experience, but, like, it's going to be, instead of just being, like, just one show, it's just going to be, like, instead of being a a podcast show, it's going to be like a podcast station, so we have gotcha. different shows on there, so, like, it's this, yeah. me interviewing people, then it's one, me and my buddy, two somethings in a pod, me and my homie, we're sitting down, he's from the East Coast, too. He lives in LA, so me and him have like our show together. We just talk shit and like laugh. And then like I'm gonna have some other ones too, the longs they come out more throughout the time. But I was like, you know, people always say that you have a nice voice, you gotta like, you know, you should be on radio. And I was like, Well, I now I can be my own radio show and not even have to like oh, go anywhere, you know? Yeah. And it's fun, man. Like you said before, passion, you know, trying to find your time for it, you know, fitting it in when you can. And like twenty twenty is giving me the time. Cause one of the big things I wanna do this year was get back to doing this because I didn't put out a podcast all 2020 until like yeah. the end of July maybe like that was the first one I actually went back on and did it again so it feels good to be back in the flow like 
I felt like I never left, you know, I'm putting out more stuff, you know, we're having conversations now. There's so many things that people need to be, there's so many conversations that need to be had right now that like the fact that I even have this ability to do this right now with you being so close, but so far at the same time, you know, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it's really dope. And like, that's like, that's, that's where my, my heart is right now in this. That's awesome, dude. I love to hear that too. Cause it's just like hearing you talk about it. I could tell you're super passionate on it, especially you and I have both been going through like a pretty uh, like rough direction of 2020, like everything changed. So it's just like, hearing that you're trying to that you're catching your creative flow back is just dope you know and i thrive off of that stuff and that's what that's what this brand represents is like finding yourself creating your passion doing your passion and just being happy so that's that's dope man i love that love yeah, that man. the jersey the jersey vibes in socal is just like you know it's, it's a different energy out here man like i had to get you on because i was like damn cause i knew you were out here for a while how long you been out here for i've been out here i moved out here october 17 2017 so yeah. coming up on three years yeah yeah because i remember like you did something with bibs back in the day and yeah. then and then you moved i started the brand started in jersey um because i called my uh so the whole how this brand started is a crazy is a crazy story um i mean obviously i did stuff with bibs i did stuff with other people back in jersey just shot regular mm -hmm. um models in philly and all that stuff but just how the brand started is honestly um because i feel like i might as well just talk about it right now yeah yeah drop it uh i mean me being first generation here in america both my parents and my family born in the philippines you know i was for i was not forced i'm sorry i take that back i was kind of like influenced to be to both you know a nurse right and I was in nursing school. Uh, I went to CCC, Camden County Community College. Me too. All that stuff. And I was getting good grades, you know. I was getting the, sh the A's and B's, but I wasn't happy, you know. Uh, I knew I would have that financial freedom, but that happiness, that passion wasn't going to be there. If I were to become a nurse, I'd walk into that hospital every single day, just miserable. Yeah, I'd have that money. That's tight. Um, but I just wouldn't be happy. So I remember one time I was in my anatomy class and we were dissecting some shit. I think it was like a pig or something. And I was just thinking in my head, I was like, dude, this is not what I want to do. This is not my passion. I love fashion. I love photography. I love videography, dancing, working out fitness. And I don't love this where I'm at right now, right? So I thought in my head, I want to make sure no one's in my shoes where, they're, where they feel like they have to do something to, just for someone else, right? So I was like, what if I create something organic? What if I build something from the ground up and inspire people to do what they love, right? I want to be passionate and remain true to myself. So I was like, hmm, live passionate, die true, LPDT, right? And then, um, you know, I talked to my other friends to see how I, could, I should, how I should execute it. But I know I have this family friend, my business partner, who I always looked up to as like an older brother, right? And he's originally from San Diego. But he was in New York for a couple of years just for his job. And he would always come to the family parties, right? But I always looked up to him. And I knew if there was any other person in my life who I wanted to start a business with, it'd be that guy, right? So I, he, he flew back to San Diego. And I still had this, had this idea in my head. I remember it was like 3 a.m. at night. I came home. And I'm sitting in the parking lot in my driveway. And it's like midnight in San Diego. Called him up. I was like, yo, Phil, how's it going, bro? Hope everything's blah, blah, blah. But dude, I have this idea. And then I just shot him the idea, X, Y, Z. And then Phil was just like, yo, dude, if, if you're really about that, if you really think you want to do this, you got to move out here to California. And I was like, shit. Like, my heart just dropped. That means if I move out to California, I got to drop out of school, leave my family, leave my friends, just whole life, just switch up. And I just told him, I was like, all right, bro, just give me, give me three months. And I'll get back to you. <clears throat> right. And then I was still working on this business. I was still working on just building it up. And then Phil was down too. So he's like, all right, well, let me do my part in California while I'm still there. So he was doing like the legal stuff, the taxes. And I was doing like the marketing, getting the content. And then one day I came home from like a party late again at 4 a.m. <clears throat> and then my dad came out of the room and he was just like, yo, David, like this dead ass will happen. He was like, I see you more, fo more focused on this clothing line than nursing school, All right? I'm going to go downstairs and when I come back up, I want you to decide what you want to do. He basically gave me like an ultimatum. Mm -hmm. 
I was like, shit. I was like, you put it on me like that, like right then and there. So right when he came downstairs, when he went downstairs, I thought in my head that phone call that I had to fill when he told me to move out to California. So when my dad came back up, I just told him straight up. I was like, yo, dude, I'm going to, when I move to California, I'm going to start this business with Phil and I'm just going to see where it goes. And my dad was just like, all right, well, you know, we support you. I mean, your mom support you. If this is what you want to do, just know that, you know, you're on your own now, but we still got your back here in Jersey, but you're on your own when you're out there. Right. So just make sure this is really what you want to do. And I guess that was like around September, celebrating my 21st birthday. October 17th, moved here, and the rest was history, man. getting everything going. Yeah. That's fucking dope, man. Yeah. That's fucking dope. I'm glad they I'm glad they supported you, though, like, at least mentally, 100%. you know? Like, that conversation can go kind of weird with different people. Like, certain parents are just like, no, you can't do it. So that's cool. They're like, just do it, but you're on your own now. Yeah, it's a, it's a blessing that my parents are super supportive of what they do, and the fact that they're starting to see more people wear my stuff is – making them more like relaxed because they're seeing like, Oh, it's working. I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Um, and there's always room for improvement, but it's just that honestly, I would say the biggest takeaway is that moving to California was the scariest decision of my life, but the best decision. Cause I never experienced so much growth, never experienced so much. Like I was, I was exposed to so much, you know, and majority of my friends are older, you know, like 27 and up. And they just give off so much wisdom and, and knowledge and education for me to learn and just really put me in the right direction and right path for my future self. So it's just, it's, it's blessed. I'm super blessed. So, yeah. Yeah, man, that sounds like a blessing, man. That's, that's a great story. How did you, did you, you drove across or did you fly across? I flew across. Um, I had my car shipped. Nice. And then I, I flew across. Yeah. So I kind of just like packed all my bags and then, I just packed the shit out of my car and then I driven here. But granted, I actually don't have that car anymore. Got into an accident, so I just drive a different car now. Yeah. And the accident you can walk away from is a good accident. 100%, dude. That's how it is. Yeah. The the difference between, like, the Jersey lifestyle and the SoCal lifestyle is so different, man. Like, 100%. I mean, I, I, I love Jersey. You know, Josh, Jerry yeah. Hill, you know, love Philly, Camden, all that. Like, love it. I love them so much. But I just knew that my heart was in California, you know, ever since I was a kid too. I always tell my parents, like my parents would tell me that, like I would always say I wanted to come to California. It's just as a creative, as a creator, entrepreneur, it's just like, I don't know. I have a lot of resources and networks out here. So I just know that my heart's out here, but Jersey is just, I don't know. I love my friends out there too. Um, but sometimes I just felt like I was stagnant. You know, I couldn't be doing the same thing every weekend, just drinking and partying and then just back to work. Like, I mean, nothing's wrong with that. And I'm not downing anyone for that. It's just, that's not me, you know? I know what you mean. I you know, know what, what you mean. mean. Yeah. You end up falling into old habits and you go back. I, I, I agree the same way, man. Like I've been here for 18 months now and I'm like, even when I go back, I'm like, I'm glad to see everyone, but like, I'm glad my ass is gone too, though. I'm like, mm -hmm. Just yeah. like the same, certain people doing the same things, and like it's cool. Like you know, everyone, everyone's do his best for them, but like, yeah, that we're, we got a whole new domain where we can conquer and like kind of find our new selves and grow and develop. And there's a lot of there's a lot of good things that come with the uncertainty of just like making a move, you know. And bro, like we're, we're on it, man. We get we in the we're on the promised land. Hundred percent, dude. And honestly, just getting out of of Jersey, you just learn a lot, you know it's a totally different environment. You know, people talk different here. People have a different mindset or have a different like perspective. You know what I mean? But we still hold that Jersey in us though. hundred percent. Oh, hundred percent. There's like a, I have some friends out here from like North Jersey mm -hmm. and like, you can't be like an East coast grind from my perspective. Right. You can't, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just like, it's, it's different. You know, you could tell someone is from the East coast from, and then some from the West Coast, you know? It's yeah, you can, like, smell You can smell the East Coast on them. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe it. But you definitely, like, like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You meet someone, it's like, yeah. Like, you've been in the snow before. You've been in the snow before. <laughs> you've been in the trenches. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's different. It's a but it's a nice, warm vibe. I'm like, all right, bet. Like, the East Coast, I like that. Like, you, you have that grit, 
in you, you know? You do. You do. I think, um, I think one of the best things about just being out here in California in general is just like, it's so, it's so interesting me being like in a place that's so big, like being in a state that's just like the whole state. I can drive so far and I'm still in the same place. Um, right. Right. Did everyone says that here, but, and then, but everyone's just so confused. It's just like, damn. So you mean, you mean you could drive two hours and you could be like two different states. I'm like, yeah, dude, I can go from like, yeah, bro. Six Virginia hours. Coast, like <laughs> New York, like to Delaware. Like it's just, it's, it's crazy. But crazy. yeah, I drive six hours. I'm just in the Bay area. That's it. Yeah. Like, it's it that that still like fucks me up sometimes because there's just so much more land over here. Everything's just so much bigger and just I don't know. Like every time every time I look around, I'm just like, damn, there's more stuff that like I thought I knew more, and like there's still so much more like to figure out over here, which is great. Great, right. and all the freeways here looking like a Hot Wheels racetrack. Like it's just like, <laughs> this is like all what we got back home. The Turnpike, two ninety five, right? That's it. But over here, they got like different numbers of freeways and different loops and like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, man. Everything's fucking 70 and up. Like, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, dude. It's crazy. Like, six-lane highway. I'm like, Insane. Insane. Yeah. But I love it, though. You gotta love it. It's, it's just... It's a, it's, it's a different pace. You know? It is. It is a different pace. I yeah. saw that... um With all, like, the stuff going on, like, all the, the political stuff going on, I saw a lot of people end up actually leaving California, too, now, which is interesting. Like, I've seen that between, like, Joe Rogan and, like, a lot of the other, like... I don't know. I don't have exact names of people besides Rogan, but I've seen like news articles like people are leaving California in droves. So I thought that was interesting. Huh? I never really, uh, I really picked up on that. Really. Um, I don't know anyone personally that's left to be honest, but like the thing, the things I've been seeing, like as far as like headlines and stuff, just because like people have been upset because they can't go anywhere, and like the amount of space you get for like what you pay for is definitely smaller. So like, you get like a nice one bedroom whatever or you get like a nice whatever land amount you have it's always usually it's smaller because like it's more expensive here overall the place so if you were going to be stuck inside if you went somewhere else that was bigger that was less for more land like it would make sense but i'm still like i don't know man like it's cool with me i'm cool i'm cool with this man because like coming where we're coming from like california is just just being in the state is enough for us but i guess those people who are dipping out they've been here for so long um, but granted, dude, like, I'm not trying to, like, hurt anyone's heart or anything like that, but I'm pretty sure California and Florida are, like, the worst states right now, so, I mean, I'm pretty sure you and I have enough discipline to just follow CDC rules and just, like, you know, do what we gotta do, but shit, if you wanna dip out and just do those rules somewhere else, then shit, go, go for it. Yeah, man, wow. definitely, yeah. Definitely make the rules, like, you gotta, you gotta do what's best for you, and that's, that's what this shit's all about. Yeah, man. How have you been, uh, like, exercise-wise, how's training-wise been for you? Um, it's funny because in the beginning of quarantine, um, I myself see myself as, like, super competitive. Um, in the beginning of quarantine, I have, a, I have a group of friends, and they had, like, the Under Armour uh, app, the running app. And they just asked me one day, like, hey, you want to join our, our competition? And I was like, sure, why not? But no one in my head, I'm like, fuck, don't, don't put a competition in me. Like, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just super competitive, right? um and it was like me and then like seven or six other people and it lasted for two months and whoever ran the most miles wins that's it and in the beginning i was like okay cool i got this i got this you know and then all of a sudden i'm like a freaking everyday marathon runner i think out of the two months four days i ran 10 miles and all i would hear i would listen to some fucked up shit bro i'd listen to like you know david goggins the name oh yeah oh yeah stay hard baby Listen to him. I listen to like Kobe Bryant motivational speeches, you know, all these different motivational speeches. I would just get lost and I wouldn't even feel my legs and I would just fucking run. Right. And in my head, like there were some times where I wasn't winning. I'd be in second place and whoever was winning, like whether it be my friend Michelle or Tiffany, I would just hear their names and I would talk shit. I was like, I can't talk this much shit and lose or be in second. Right. So I'd run every single day. Sometimes I'd do two days. I think, and I ended up winning, I'm not trying to boast or anything like that, but I was just like, dang, this is from that small yes that I thought was just going to be a nonchalant, you know, just a little non-competitive uh, challenge. It became mm-hmm. like, super competitive. I ended up running like 122 miles out of those two months. Damn. Um, but I told him, I was like, all right, after this, don't ever ask me to join the running challenge again. That shit sucked, <laughs> bro. Like, I was like, fuck that. 
But other than that, I just been working out in, in the house. Uh, I got some weights. I got myself a bench, <laughs> yoga mat, um, jump rope here and there. Nice. Um, I told you before, I'm trying to revive some old passions. I was into dancing. So that's another form of cardio for me, just doing different choreographies and hip hop pieces. I've yet to like put them out on Instagram or anything like that, but staying active, you know? Yeah, man, staying active how you can. I, that's yeah. fucking, that's fucking amazing. So are you working out at home or is just, you know? Yeah, it's mostly home shit for me. Like when the gym's opened up a little bit, I went to one for a little bit, but like it's mostly home shit. The one problem with me is that I was working in the gym before. So like, I never thought about having any home shit because I was like, all oh, this is at my yeah. job. Yeah. So I really been having like, get more stuff as like quarantine went on longer. I was like, fuck, like I was, got caught with my fucking pants down. Cause that first, that first like March, I was like, I'm just doing push ups and jump squats all the time. Granted, yeah. like, you know, I can make up enough stuff to do, but for a month and then two months and then three months, I was like, this is, this is awful. You gotta switch it up, yeah. Man. Yeah, you do. So, I mean, I've been still doing a lot of home stuff recently. Um, I started running a little bit more. I, um, I've uh, like I've been trying to do like some. I want to get into learn martial arts. So I was thinking about doing like judo or jitsu, one of the two. Or if they're the same thing, I haven't like looked enough. Like it's an idea that I've been like terminating with. Yeah. But um, I like so I looked up some like the warm up and techniques to do like in the house. But besides that, man, like supposed to, everything's been basically in the home or like hitting the convention center steps by my house or going for a run. But overall, like it's. It's 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 fun, you know. I'm I'm actually buying some more equipment as well, so I'll have that shit too. But overall, like, I'm still kind of pissed. I'm like, fuck, man. Like, I should have had way more shit beforehand. Yeah, yeah, and it's crazy because you'll be trying to buy like new stuff. Shit's super overpriced, man. Because everyone knows that shit's in demand. Like, I bought twenty pound, twenty five pound dumbbells, uh, one pair. Did I paid like ninety five bucks? But I did anyway because I was like, I know we're gonna be in quarantine for a minute, so. It's a good investment. It's a good investment, man. Yeah. I've been a good time to, the funny time is it's not a good, it's not a good time to own a gym, but if you have a gym equipment store, you're making a killing right now. You're going to kill him. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. The only thing is it's like, it's freaking hot. So I just been working in my, my living room. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure San Diego is a lot more chill and cooler. But yeah. Dude, I'm out here in like LA area or IE by the desert and Riverside and all that fucking heat wave, man. It's like around hundred degrees. So I'm just like, oh, fuck this. Someone's working out, blasting the AC, working out in my living room. Yeah, man. I went up to LA two weeks ago to go film an episode with my boy. And um, I I forgot how much the temperature difference is. Like, you guys are way hotter than we are. Yeah. Like, yeah. at least 20 degrees. And I went up there. I was like, what the fuck? I haven't seen 95 in weeks. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I definitely dude. become a little weather bitch, though. Like, living here, I'm like. Oh, my God. I say the same thing, bro. <laughs> I say the same thing. You know, it's funny. You'll be. In the wintertime, wintertime here, bro, is like fucking springtime in Jersey. It is. It is. But I'm cold. I'm so cold. I'm like, yo. I'm cold now, yeah, because we've become adapted to this California weather, right? Like, we've become a little, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but we've become a little bitches when it comes to the weather. You know, it's funny. I'll be, I'll be walking around Victoria Gardens and Rancho, and it's like, what, like 60 degrees out for us? That's cool. That's chilling. But they're wearing scarves and gloves. I'm like, what the fuck? Like. What you doing, yo? This is like beach weather for us, bro. It really is, man. Funny. That's how I knew I changed. I went outside. It said 63 degrees. And I was like, damn, I need to get me a hoodie, like a jacket, a yeah. scarf. The fuck is this? Yep. yep. <laughs> I was a year in and, that, and I had that realization too. I was like, damn, that really changed. I get cold now, bro. And I went back to Jersey. Um, well, I went back in March right before quarantine happened. But the last time I went back before that was like in the wintertime. Bro, my face hurt. Stepped outside the Philadelphia airport and it was cold. I was like, damn, this is not, we're not in California anymore, man. Shit was cold, bro. Changes a lot. Changes, Changes a lot. lot. So with you, um, with your, with the, with the brand, like has, has COVID affected anything as far as like production, like the t-shirt material shipping or like how does, how, how is the like logistics of actual, like your business changed since this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, in the beginning, it was kind of tough for us because we were trying to figure out if our screen printers or distributors were um, still operating and functioning mm -hmm. the same way. Because, you know, everything changing with like everyone staying at home and working and all that. So it's definitely in the beginning, it affected us a little bit because we had somewhat of a delay. But then we found out that our screen printers and just some of our distributors were still operating the same. So we kind of just hopped back on that. Um, it's 
It's weird because in the beginning of quarantine, after we figured everything out that people were, that our um, other businesses were still running, our sales kind of doubled from last really? year. I would have thought that they wouldn't because like people are at home. Well, you don't need to buy clothes. You're just chilling at home, right? But I guess now since everyone is just at home, not spending as much, they have, they're catering their spending to what they really want, you know? So that kind of happened. Um, so our sales kind of doubled from last year in the beginning. Um, I would say it has affected us in a good way. Um, reason why is because like I'm at home now since I got furloughed from my job. So I have full awareness of the brand. I have, I have all this time to just see what I could revamp, see what I could work on, what we could adapt and implement as new marketing strategies. So it's a nice, this whole quarantine is a nice reset for us to revamp and transition for a better next year or better um, upcoming quarters. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, what has changed a lot too with, running a brand and running a company um i would say with everything going on with like the whole black lives matter movement has like affected us a lot and because seeing everything in social media every time you go on instagram or twitter or facebook you just see everything that's going on mm -hmm. right with the videos with the protests with the boycotts and all that and it just like i said which is why we launched that and racism um campaign it's just like sometimes i don't feel right just launching a new shirt that has nothing to do with like black lives matter you know what i mean because i feel like as a ceo of this brand and phil being doing the same thing i feel like we got to do whatever we can to just keep ourselves involved so it's just like i remember it was tough i was like should i even post a picture on instagram today that has to do with our brand you know with everything else going on you know like it didn't feel right so I went to a lot of my other friends who were marketers and they were just saying like, yo, just fire you. I would just not put it on hold, but just lay low for a bit and kind of just adapt to what's going on right now and just let whatever's important, which is like everything going on, the Black Lives Matter and all that, just let that be the spotlight for now. And if you're going to put something out, have it be in accordance to that. Um, I'm not saying I have to do that. We have to do that for the rest of our lives, but I just feel like Right now is the time to do that. So it kind of it kind of affected us in that way of just transitioning, like being super cautious of what we put up. You know, I think that um, that was probably a commonality in a lot of things, like especially around that time period when, like, you know, when the protests really started beginning, and you had like the whole Black Tuesday thing. Yeah, like that whole week was kind of like like posting anything on social media was kind of just like uh, depending on what you put, like yeah, it was definitely going to be a little a little dicey. Um, yeah. And even now, still, like, things are still, there's more stuff coming up. There's more things changing. So I think um, as a whole, like, putting out, though the activism has definitely taken a bigger role in content now more than anything else, like, ever, you know? And and uh, even now, like, the, 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 the historical, the, the cool things, like, the historical evidence of, like, what happened during this time period, what your company was doing during this time period is now like, it's, it's on wax, you know, like yeah. you'll be able to see 20 years from now, 40 years from now, hundred years from now, when the country was in this state and time, like what was your company doing? what you guys say? What was you guys action? So I think it's cool to be that you can now have like your footprint for your brand, for you yeah. during this time and just like have it be documented for future generations to see. Cause that's like the, that is like the, the, I think the, the, the best thing about this, so no matter what people are feeling at the moment, like history is going to tell the truth, you know, time heals, time heals and shows all. So people will see what, what they should have been doing or regret what they didn't do. And, you know, I think all the right choices were made between us. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, like, especially for both of us being people of color too, like yeah. you got to play our part. And if, if you're not a person of color, it's just like, you got to do your part regardless and you just get to do what feels right. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm no, I'm no activist, you know, I'm Same. no activist and I, I, I didn't, I didn't grow up to be an activist, but I, I'm inspired by those who are, you know, and I want to be a leader and I strive to be a leader. So me doing my part and running this business 
and doing whatever I can to lead others in the right direction. And I'm pretty sure Phil can do the same. Activists or not, you got to do your part. You do. So. You do. I think it's also very interesting that, like, it's an election year this year. So no matter what happens, everything's going to be just so, like, fuck you, fuck you. Like, everything just, like, us against them for everything, you know? I'm not trash. It, it is. Yeah. It is, like, a lot. Like, there's just so much tension, man. Like, the entire world just, like, it feels like the entire world just, like, just, like, ready to go and ads with each other. But, you know, after the election goes by, I imagine things will cool down a little bit more. At least I hope it will. You know, I, I would assume it will after that because it's going to be a very, a very interesting next couple of weeks. Like, it's still August right now. And by the time this – uh by the time it's 2020 is done, like this, this last, I think this last quarter of 2020 is going to be like the wildest one. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This is fourth quarter right here. Hundred percent, dude. And it's going to be, su- it's going to be a very pivotal moment after the election. It one is. way or the other. I mean, I'm, I'm on board with you. Like, I, I really hope that everything cools down. Hope everything kind of opens back up next year whether it's a vaccine coming out or something to be honest i don't see a vaccine coming out till like the end of next year or something like that Mm because a lot has to go through but who am i i'm no cdc representative or something like that but yeah dude i'm hoping things pop back up because it's just i miss i'm I'm an extrovert you know so i miss like going out to parties and all that stuff and miss miss seeing people but you know, gotta take take it with a grain of salt. Do whatever you can for now, especially being in quarantine. Definitely do, definitely do. Do you feel like um, like do you feel like, do what do you think the, like the best growth you had so far was just like yourself in twenty twenty? You think happened just for you as like a business owner right now? Like, what do you think your biggest like growth you've had for yourself? Think about thinking back to your twenty twenty, but thinking back to your twenty nineteen self. What do you feel like the best? growth you've had in this 2020 mm-hmm. 100%. saga love that love that and it's funny because i've been thinking about that with myself too and a, and a lot of my um mentors and friends we were talking about like what if nothing changed in 2020 right what if it was just like there was no covid nothing going on what would we be doing right and like i just said i'm an extrovert right and i my friends and i we would always be in vegas going out to clubs putting our money here putting our money there and all that um, and we just like to have fun. Nothing wrong with that, right? But there's a time and place for everything. There is. So I, me being 23, I'm turning 24. I think the best thing that I've done myself during this 20, this year of 2020 was prep myself for the, my future self in like 10 years now in ways where it's mental health and financially. Mm-hmm. I say financially because I've gotten into doing this quarantine was learning how to invest into different streams of income. Nice. Um, I've learned how to trade stocks, debit spreads, option calls, call options, whatever. Learn how to execute those. Um, started a savings account for real estate and just like different ways to invest and put my money into different places for it to work oh. on themselves. Rather, not just this business, you know, I want to have multiple sources of income. Mm-hmm. So, I think that's probably the best thing I've ever done for myself was just prep myself for a better future, you know, for whether it be for my future wife and kids, for my parents, you know, paying off their house. It's just, you know, have, being smart with my money instead of just like going out and partying and all that stuff. Nothing wrong with that. Go ahead, have fun. But that can't be it. It can't know? be it. That can't be it. Yeah. I think 2020 as a whole definitely has put me as well in like a more long-term thinking to certain things. Like I feel like I always had enough of it, but like, this was like, you really got to make sure you know what's happening in the next couple sagas. And even like political stuff too. Like I was never like too political. I didn't really think about stuff too much. I yeah, just like, cool. whatever, yeah. as, long, as long as it didn't affect me, I was like, whatever, you know yeah. what I mean? And affect me. I was like, I'm not really, I'm, I don't like to get into politics. It's not my, yeah. But there's now I'm like, I'm watching yeah. shit and I'm like, uh, a little more I'm like all right what the, what the fuck's this who's that what yeah. that person say because I've um I've also been driving for Uber like during this time nice. they almost got rid of all of us like they almost like last week it was almost last week of all Ubers because like some shit they passed and I was like fuck like yeah. that would have been real bad but uh, whatever happened like they they didn't end up getting rid of it but that was still like a scare or something that happened I was like 
politics are way like like as I knew they were important, obviously. But like yeah. now it's like this shit's affecting me like within like a week. So like I'm eyes a little more peeled now. So I feel like that that maturity that came with this year is something that's gonna stay with me and I'm at it with you for like the rest of the fucking time. Yeah, dude, a lot of maturity. And yeah, going back to like whatever like um politicians decide or whatever they sign off on, it affects us like a week later or a day later. It's crazy. And we never had that mindset like last year because we yeah. weren't really engaged, but now we have so much awareness. Now everything is has that strong ripple effect, you know? So it's just like, wow, shit is really crazy out here. You really got to set yourself a nice safety net for being prepped with whatever comes tomorrow, you know? So, yeah. Definitely do. Like you definitely, definitely fucking do, man. Like it's, it's crazy. Yeah, so, so David, for the people that want to follow you and uh, you know follow the brand, the movement, how do they how do they get in contact with you? Yeah, uh, I mean, go to our website opdtmovement.com. OPDT stands for Live Passionate, Die True. Passionate, Die True, baby. Um, yeah, Instagram, same thing. OPDT Movement, Twitter, OPDT Movement, same thing. Um, and then just my personal David and Gallen. I'm sure you could put like a my last name somewhere. Yeah, I'll put everything in the notes, but if anyone who's listening that can't see it at the moment, like they're in the car or whatever, like they'll be able to hear it and like remember to do it later. Yeah, and right now it's towards the end of August. I know we're going to be doing another drop in September. Nice. We're trying to transition into like different, more of a street, urban, vintage vibe instead of just the minimalistic vibe. I mean, we're still going to have both, but we just like to expand and cater towards different demographics. So stay tuned for that. But other than that dude this call is sick dude thank you again for having me on man I no love problem it. i'm glad had you uh, thank you for coming on man i appreciate the time yeah dude 100 percent. all right guys thank you so much for listening hope you enjoyed the show and uh take care later <laughs>